Welcome back. Today we're going to tackle an issue that every idle game developer knows all too well, and you've probably experienced as well. I'm talking about caffeine addiction. No, wait. Number creep. When those small simple numbers start to spiral out of control and turn into astronomical figures, that can be difficult to even comprehend. But fear not, because there's a solution to help you express those large numbers in a more compact format. Let's go. When given a number, we want to take the first three leading digits. Here, we have 932. Next, we'll be inserting a decimal point, indicating where the highest magnitude ends. This means there are three decimal placement options. The decimal point can be placed after the first digit, second, or not at all. In this case, we're looking at 9,320,500. So, we'd want to place our decimal point after the 9, leaving us with 9.32 million. If we were to add an additional zero to this number, then we'd want to place the decimal point after 93, leaving us with 93.2 million. And the last scenario would be adding another zero, and we'd have all three of our digits inside that highest magnitude, so we wouldn't be required to place a decimal at all, and we could simply state 932 million. And the final bit is figuring out what our suffix needs to be, and we do that by taking the length of our number and dividing that by three, and based on the quotient, We'll have no suffix, k for thousand, m for million, and so on. And we'll be starting out with a brand new project. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a few global variables. The first four are all going to be number variables, and we're gonna have one for value, the number length, the first three numbers, and the remainder. Next, we're going to add another variable. This will be for the suffixes, and this will be used as an array. Then we're going to need a child for each different suffix we're going to have, which will be a total of eight. So zero through seven. And these will all be string variables. And we'll have blank for the first one, then K, M, B, T, Q, A, Q, U, S, X. For thousand, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, and sextillion. And we'll stop there, since that's where gdevelop turns our numbers into exponential form, and we would need a different equation to go further. So to set up our board, we're going to add two different text objects. This first object is going to sit on top, and this will always update with the exact value that is held in our global variable value. And then the bottom text object will be the one that shows the condensed form. And we'll go ahead and rename those so I can tell what they are. And then in our code, Go ahead and edit this out and we're going to want to on every tick set the value of our first text box to our global variable value and we'll remove the beginning of scene and this way it's every tick so now we have to add a way to change the value of our value and to do this i'm going to add a timer and i only want to add this timer once so at beginning of the scene i'll go ahead and add a timer and we'll call that value update since we'll be updating our value with it. And anytime that value update is greater than one second, then I'll go ahead and copy paste in there so we reset that value. So every one second this resets. And also I'm going to take that value, which is in my global variables, and I'm going to add the value that's held in there and also add one. And this will just be a good way to display quickly a rising value so we can see the condensed form. And I'm also going to speed up the timer a bit. The next three lines of code, I'll be taking the value and just grabbing some important information. These aren't actually required, but it will make it look a lot neater and be a lot easier to read afterwards. First is numly, and I'm going to take our value, turn it into a string, and count how many letters are in that string, and then return that number to numly. Next we have first three, and here I'm going to take a substring of our current value, starting at zero and counting three characters. So no matter how long the string is, I'm going to take the first three letters and return that as our value for first three. And my last bit of code here, we'll be using the num length we've already solved for, and getting the remainder when we divide by three. And now that we have our three variables set up, our event sheet will look like this, and we're ready to set our text to the condensed form. In the first step here, we're going to go ahead and break our value down to the first three, 
and then we're going to add the suffix. And we get the suffix by grabbing our number length, minus 1, and dividing that by 3, and then whatever that value is, we grab that index spot of our array, suffixes. And looking here, we have a few things to fix. First off, our zero index of suffixes gives us two quotes instead of a blank space. And second, we don't have a decimal point yet. So no matter what, it looks like we have three values in our highest magnitude. For the first fix, we're just going to go into a condition with at beginning as scene, and we're going to force a change in our variable for suffixes at zero. And we started out with double quotes, and we're going to reset it to double quotes. And I'm not sure why on initiation I can't have double quotes in there, but this will fix the issue. And for the fixes for our decimal points, we will add some specific conditions with an or condition. And if our remainder is equal to zero, or if our num length is below three, meaning our values under a thousand, we're not going to need a decimal, so we're going to keep the same algorithm for our text that we used to have. And above that, if our global variable for remainder is not equal to zero, instead of grabbing our first three, we're going to grab a substring or a portion of our first three. So starting at the first spot, we are going to grab up until the remainder. Once we hit that remainder, we'll add our decimal, and then we'll grab the rest of our first three by again grabbing a substring starting at a remainder and going up to our third spot. And this part of the code goes above, that way if we meet one of our OR conditions, we will overwrite it with the non-decimal required numbers. And that's it for now, you now have the tools and knowledge to better manage your numbers. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the content, and aren't currently a subscriber, now's your chance to help me reach a sub count that requires condensed number formatting. Peace.